You're watching Let the Quran Speak. Now we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. If you have a question yourself, please visit our website, www.quranspeaks.com. Okay, Brother Shabir, the first question is about um, women's movements outside of their house. So this person is referring to a hadith which seems to say, suggest that women should um, be concealed in their homes from childbirth until death. Um, and allowed to come out just very rarely. This is what the individual is saying. So the individual is saying, why does Islam place so much unnecessary restriction on women, which at times makes their lives miserable? Well, I, a lot of rules have been drawn up in, in the classical literature about women going out of the house and so on. And uh, this uh, is, is a result of some confusion between uh, the, uh, the Quranic verse that was addressed to the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and, uh, and the, the application of this in a general sense to all women. Mm -hmm. So let me be more clear. The Quran in, in Surah 33 uh, addresses the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and, and specifically says, O oh, you wives of the Prophet, uh, remain uh, attached to your homes and do not uh, display yourselves in, in a wanton way in, in the way uh, the women used to do in the time of ignorance. Uh, the, the wives of the Prophet were specifically addressed and there is a difference between the wives of the Prophet and other women in that uh, the wives of the Prophet are considered to be the mothers of the believers uh, and uh, uh, this is a, a, a religious relationship, it's, it's, not, it's not a physical one. Uh, so if, uh, with our physical mothers we, we have a natural sense of uh, inhibition. Uh, and, and we know the ways in which we can deal with our mother and that's different in the way we're going to relate to other women. Uh, but uh, in the case of the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, while it was prohibited for the male believers to marry them after the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, and, and that shows the, the, that they are the mothers of the believers, uh, at the same time, it, it was not a physical relationship, so the natural physical inhibition was not there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the real case at hand was that there, there was a, a man who uh, expressed the wish that he would marry one of the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, after he dies. So that can only come because the person does not have that physical inhibition. Hmm. Uh, one does not express the wish that he would marry his mother. Uh, so the, uh, here we have a situation where the, the believing men were to relate to the wives of the Prophet as though they are our mothers, and at the same time, uh, th that physical inhibition is not there. So what, what's, 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 what needs to be done about that situation? Well, the wives of the Prophet were specifically instructed to govern themselves in a, in a particular way that will maintain uh, the decency of the relationship that should be expected between them as mothers and the believing men at large. And, and so what they were being uh, instructed with uh, are, are a number of re restrictions which were not to be applied to women in general. So the wives of the Prophet were to speak in a, in a particular way, they were to stay at home mostly. Uh, if men came to ask them uh, for something, they were to ask from behind a veil or behind a curtain. And uh, what uh, uh, some interpreters did over time was that they applied those rules in general to all women. Hmm. And, and that is unfair and, and, and incorrect. Unfair to women in general and, and incorrect in terms of the principles of, uh, of Islamic law in that you cannot take something that is addressed to some specific individuals and then turn that into a general rule for all individuals, even individuals who are unlike the ones to whom the, the address was initially made. Mm -hmm. Do we have any, any understanding of or any knowledge of what other women were doing at the time? Or commands given to other women at the time? Oh, well, it, it, to the first part, uh, do we know what other women were doing at the time? Yes, it is very clear from many passages of the Quran and uh, from uh, uh, reports about the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that m women were moving about. Uh, they could go out for their needs. Uh, they sometimes came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to ask him questions. Uh, sometimes uh, a man would ask a woman a question, and that is recorded because the answer is given to us. Uh, men could approach women and uh, propose marriage to them. Women could have approached men at the time and offered to get married to the man and the man would accept and the marriage would be uh, solemnized. Uh, 
so uh, all of these were natural interactions that continued between men and women. Now what does the Quran say? The Quran addresses both men and women to lower their gazes, to guard their modesty, and uh, to cover themselves in a, in a decent way. But then they could still go about in society and they could still propose marriage to each other. Uh, the, uh, an interesting uh, situation is described in the Quran where you have a widow and uh, the widow is observing her um, uh, waiting period following the, the death of her husband and uh, the believing men are being told, well then, uh, if you uh, want to marry these women, uh, you can, God knows what you have in, in your heart, but you are not to solemnize a contract during that period of, of waiting. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you can speak some words that are common and, and that are uh, known to be decent uh, speech in, in that society at the time. Now the commentators on the Quran uh, say that uh, a man may approach a woman in that situation and say to her, well, lucky will be the, the man who gets you as a wife. Or he might say to her, just let me know when, when your waiting period is over. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, all of these uh, are, are ways of expressing his interest in getting married to her. So if a man could approach a woman while she's observing her waiting period and indicate that, well, I'm interested in you to get married to you once your waiting period is over, th that, that shows that there was the, all the kinds of healthy relationships that go on in, in societies in general. And uh, a, a smooth interaction between men and women that, that do, uh, interaction of a nature that does not border on the immoral. And uh, what uh, scholars have done over time is that they have tried to close all of the gates and put a lot of restrictions uh, to prevent anyone from falling into any possibility of evil altogether. So uh, what does someone do now? What does a Muslim woman do now? How does she sort out the tradition? That seems to restrict her her, her movement. Are well, this, this is uh, yes. I mean, the sorting out is not only the obligation of women, but uh, the obligation of the entire society. Because if there is injustice in our society, then we're all blameworthy for that, the men and the women, uh, and uh, we we cannot uh, impose on on anyone anything more than God Himself has imposed. That will be injustice, and uh, if uh, we as a society impose on on women. Uh, more commands, more restrictions than God himself has imposed, uh, then uh, we are at fault. Uh, we are committing injustice and we have to correct this situation. It is uh, high time for uh, the Muslim scholars, leaders, interpreters of the Quran and students of Hadith uh, to go back to the books, to study the matter very carefully, look at the current situation and uh, 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 make this matter clear, uh, the, as clear as, as can be so that uh, men and women uh, both uh, feel that uh, they are practicing a faith uh, that, that is not full of restrictions but that is quite liberal and that uh, it in fact uh, uh, smooths the way uh, for people to have a life that they will enjoy in this world, uh, a, a life that is characterized by decency and uh, the worship of God and service to humanity. Uh, such that we, we long for the life hereafter in which we will have that close communion with God. Mm -hmm. And I guess such that women don't, don't feel that Islam is, you know, a negative force in their lives. Yes, and of course it's not only uh, women that feel this, uh, I even m the men will, will feel the effect of this because if you have a Muslim meeting in which there are men and women, uh, the women feel, yeah, we've got to, you know, restrict ourselves, we can't get close to the men, but then the men have the same restriction, they're feeling we can't get close to the women because, my God, the moment you say a word to a woman, somebody will be looking at you funny. Uh, so you, 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 you have to distinguish between decent and indecent behavior and there's a lot that is decent and can go on uh, within the Muslim context. All right, thank you for that, Brother Shabir. You're welcome. That's all the time we have for updates and additional information. Please visit our website, www.quranspeaks.com and write to us because your comments and questions help guide the show. I'm Safiya Ali for all of us here at Let the Quran Speak. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar